Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. Guys, I don't know what to say. I have tears of joy because we all know how bad Compose Navigation has been. It was an absolute pain to define routes because for every single argument, we first of all needed to worry about if it's mandatory, if it's optional, uh, then choose the right format in the route define what type each argument is, define if it's nullable, define if it's not nullable, potentially define default values. Then when we navigate it, we needed to remember the right route format. If we had some kind of issues there, our app broke. If we wanted to pass string arguments, we needed to remember to really encode these to some kind of format that works for routes, because if they contain maybe spaces or question marks, then our route is messed up if we don't encode these special characters. And all that now has an end. We finally have official support for type safe navigation in Jetpack Compose. We don't have any more routes. We have type safe arguments without any specific navigation library other than the official one. And you won't believe how easy it will be to set this up. Let's take a look at how this works. I am in an empty Jetpack Compose Android Studio project. And the first thing we want to add is the dependencies for that. Let's open Gradle scripts, go inside of our version catalog, scroll down to our libraries block and paste these two dependencies, which you can of course find in my GitHub repository as usual. So we have navigation compose on the one hand and we have Kotlin X serialization JSON, which is what the new navigation compose dependency uses under the hood in order to serialize arguments in a type safe manner. We then also need to specify the versions for these two dependencies. We can do this here below our versions block, which is on the one hand compose navigation. Make sure to use the 2.8.0 alpha 8 one because that introduced this new type safe support and cotton X serialization as well. Hit sync now. And then after that, we can add this to our build.gradle file. And no, actually not yet, because I forgot to apply the Gradle plugin for Kotlin X serialization, but also add this version right here. Sync this. Again, you can also, of course, copy paste this from my repo. Go to build.gradle app, apply our serialization plugin with alias, lips, plugins, Kotlin, serialization. There we go. Scroll down and apply our two other dependencies, implementation, lips, navigation, compose. And we have implementation with a lips, Kotlin X serialization dot JSON. Oops, like this. Hit sync now, and then we're ready to implement our nav host. Inside, oh, let's just get rid of the scaffold. Inside this theme. Let's first of all have a nav controller reference. That's nothing new. That's still what, oops. That's still what we need in order to navigate from screen to screen. We also need to define a nav host where we assign this nav controller reference here. We need to define a start destination. We don't want to define a graph, but a start destination. And if we take a look here, then we have one more overload. You can see we have a start destination of type any, we have a start destination of type string, but we also have a start destination of type K class, so some kind of Kotlin class. And here our route is also a Kotlin class. How does that work? Well, previously what we did to define a route is we defined the start destination, maybe screen A, then we had a composable um, with screen A, maybe some arguments. Here we had the first argument, argument one and so on. And for each argument, we also needed to define a list of arguments with a list of nav argument, define the name of the argument, define the type, define if it's nullable, define the default value, and so on. That was it's such a pain because that was not only so much boilerplate code, but it was also very error-prone boilerplate code. And that has an end. Let's take a look at how, at how this works. So what we now do for every single screen is, let's get, out, get rid of this greeting here, Every single screen, we will now define something like this. Screen A, we annotate this with serializable, and that's it. We can now take this, assign this as a start destination screen A, have a composable, where we say it's of type screen A, and then we can have some kind of box maybe. Let's have a centered text here. It will make size. Um, well, let's actually make this a column where we say, okay, vertical arrangement is arrangement center. Horizontal alignment is center horizontally. And in here, 
we will then have a button to go to the next screen. We say text, not text field, just text. Go to screen B. So far, so good. So we defined our start destination, but why did we really make this an object? Why did we annotate this with a serializable? And why is all that so new? The cool stuff starts when we start to add a second screen, because our routes from now on won't be strings anymore. Internally, yes, but not for us. No, they will be cotton objects. And if we want to have a screen B, and we maybe want to pass two arguments to it, one optional one and one mandatory one, then what we can do is we can define that as a data class, screen B, which corresponds to the route of screen B, where we say we have maybe a name argument, which we pass, which is optional, just as an example, and we have an H, which is a mandatory integer argument. We again annotate this with a serializable, and this is now our road for screen B. If we now go ahead and we add this here, we have our screen B, and we maybe have another column which centers the text here, we want to say, okay, mm, name and age years old, those are the arguments we now want to pass from screen one, screen A, to screen B. How do we now retrieve these? Previously, what we needed to do is we needed to call nav controller, navigate, then construct some kind of route here, screen B, attach the arguments inside that route, and so on. What we can now do is we can just say screen B instantiate an instance of this class and define the name, like William and the age, let's say, 25. And that's how we navigate. We have type safe arguments. And if we now want to retrieve these, we go in inside of screen B. We say val args is equal to it, so we're now backsec entry, dot to route. And we say, okay, that's of type screen B. And then we can say args dot name and args.h. And if we launch this, then it will work. <laughs> that's that's so much less code. I really don't know why they waited so long with this and didn't make this a default back then. Uh, but I also, of course, need to say that if you build such a huge framework like Jetpack Compose, uh, then um, it can, of course, happen that you can't predict everything out there. Um, so this is totally understandable on the other side. On the other side, let's take a look. Go to screen B. There we go. William, 25 years old. If we want to use an optional argument for the name, we can just pass null. Relaunch this. Go to screen B. And then we don't have the name argument there. We just print null. Isn't that cool? Isn't that so much easier? It's, of course, still in an early stage. It's still an alpha version of this library. But starting from now, this will improve. We will have an easier Compose navigation. So happy migration. At this point, it also supports passing parcelables. That's maybe interesting to know. Uh, but it, that requires some further setup, some custom setup. But if you have that, you can also use parcelables with this. Although I usually wouldn't recommend passing around parcelables unless these are really small objects. But rather, if you maybe have a list in a detail screen, you want to get to the detail screen to display some kind of larger data structure, larger item, then just pass the ID, load it from the database or reload it from the API or so, and then you are also much better off with just passing an ID parameter. Awesome. I'm personally very happy that we now finally have this. Uh, I think Compose and KMP and the whole ecosystem is on a very good way. All those current changes are really cool. Like we have just gotten a Jetpack view model for Kotlin multi-platform. We now have type-safe navigation arguments. We have navigation compose for Kotlin multi-platform. We have room for Kotlin multi-platform. So a lot of cool things are currently happening to the Android ecosystem, which I very much welcome. And I hope you do too. What I would also welcome very much is you in my 10-week mentorship program. So if you want to work together with me very closely, if you want code reviews, if you want individual feedback on your coding style, then apply to my 10-week program. If based on what you write, you could fit well into the program, we will just hop into a completely non-binding call, talk about the details, you can ask me any questions about the program, and if that sounds good, then we make it fix in the call. So apply if that sounds good to you, and other than that, thanks so much for watching. See you back in the next video, have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.